Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Martin Drive Show. Welcome back to our continued coverage of the Russia and Ukraine crisis. As we've been following along with for the past couple hours, the attacks on eastern Ukraine have begun and they are intense. We've seen live footage of civilians and paramedics under fire. We've seen Zelensky declaring the regrouping of Russians done in the beginning of the attacks starting. And now I want to get some news breakdown of what's actually been going on. So let's go ahead and get into it. News coming in from Ukraine tonight. Just a short time ago, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky saying that Russia's battle for eastern Ukraine, this new offensive, they say, now underway. What the Pentagon is saying about this tonight. Meantime, Russia claiming to have attacked hundreds of targets in just the past 24 hours with missiles, including the first deadly attack on Lviv in the west, until now considered relatively safe for people trying to flee war. Now at least seven people have been killed. And Russia appears to be on the brink of taking Mariupol, Ukrainian troops inside a large steel plant, refusing to surrender tonight. But the battle in Mariupol, also a street fight. This video from a right-wing group working with Ukraine's National Guard, claiming to show one of its fighters tossing explosives over a wall toward a Russian vehicle. And tonight, this new... That's a lot of information really quickly. Um... Mariupol is a large city in Ukraine. Um, obviously, it's in the south, and the fact that Russia is going to take it is absolutely tragic. It's been one of the most intense fights in all of Ukraine, um, probably one of the most well-covered fights in all of Ukraine as well. Um, so that one definitely sticks out um, as the most prominent news for sure. Um, honestly so prominent it almost made me forget well it did make me forget like the first 30 seconds of what he was talking about so new image of russia's humiliating loss its ship just before it sank abc's james longman from inside ukraine again tonight tonight i apologize i do remember the 100 missile attacks that killed seven is heartbreaking in lviv um i know i say heartbreaking a lot but that's just the best adjective there really is when you're watching things as gut-wrenching as we watch um, pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis uh, on this channel. So, you know, the fact that he attacked a really big evacuation city is becoming more and more common um, as he attacked an evacuation, he being Vladimir Putin, who, you know, kind of ordered the whole invasion. So at the end of the day, the responsibility falls on him. Um, an attack on an evacuation train, evacuation cities, his attacks are becoming more personal and more and more criminal is really the best way to put it. Tonight, as Russia launches the biggest barrage of missiles across Ukraine in weeks, President Zelensky has announced Vladimir Putin's new offensive to take full control of the eastern Donbass region is now underway. Late this afternoon, Zelensky addressing his nation, saying, no matter how many Russian soldiers are driven there, we will fight. We will defend ourselves. The Pentagon tonight still assessing whether or not that major Russian offensive has begun. We've seen the Russians reinforce their forces there. They've added some battalion tactical groups into the region. So there is active fighting going on right now. This new video well, there's active fighting. That's important. Um, I know it's a process for the Pentagon. In all reality, how does that really affect anything? Um, we've been sending military aid, and now there's a warning that said military aid is prohibited by Russia. So I don't think the attacks are what the Pentagon needs to be worried about or what any part of our command centers need to be worried about as much as is the what's the risk, what's the consequences, and what are we going to do if we decide to continue supplying Ukraine with military aid? We gave them one this last weekend, but if we continue to, you know, odds are we might be dragged into a World War III. So it, it's getting pretty close to kind of Putin, in other words, saying get on or get off the pot. And I'm really curious to see what our country, amongst many, many other countries, decide to do. Video circulating online. 
shows missiles slamming the western city of Lviv, usually a place of relative safety, those strikes deadly for the first time in this war. Seven dead, nearly a dozen injured. Russia claiming it hit more than 300 targets today alone. It comes as Russian forces could be on the brink of seizing control of Mariupol, where the resistance has been fierce. This disturbing video, which was released by the far-right Azov battalion, who are fighting with the Ukrainians, seems to show one of their fighters climbing a wall and throwing an explosive towards that red van, marked with the letter Z, a symbol for Russian troops. It's unclear when this video was filmed. Holding Mariupol... So it's an unclear video of when it's filmed, and it's disturbing that he threw one bomb over a wall at a van? Uh... I just don't like the analysis of that. I mean, yeah, it's a little disturbing to watch, fine, but the amount of things that we see, we just watched two missiles consecutively blow up in the same spot. I don't think the C4 really should be the disturbing thing here. Critical for Ukraine, and these forces are all that's standing in the way of Russia's attempt to create a land bridge between occupied Crimea in the south and so the this, east. So this map's really important, okay? Um, this is why Mariupol is a very extensive target and has been. If you can see my mouse cursor circling Mariupol, it's right, it's a port city right along the Russian border. And if they attack that, and it seems like they're going to succeed, then they have entry points through Crimea up to the south. And now they can have a full entry point through, you know, this eastern region in Russia and they're extending how much farther they can move towards Kiev. These are easy targets um, because they're right next to Russia. They're obvious targets. That's why they regrouped and they essentially said, we're going to have to slow down and take this one step at a time. But for them to get all the way to Kiev, all the way to the north, northern, essentially northwestern part of Ukraine, it's going to take a lot more work and a lot more um, fighting and they already kind of had something built up and they had to get rid of it and so to see how it all plays out will be interesting but my guess is that Russia's going to take Donbass and Russia already owns Crimea and they're going to take Mariupol and they're going to start slowly trying to move in towards Kiev and the interesting part is going to be a do they have the supplies to do this over a long period of time? Because we saw what happened with their convoy. And B, if the world does or doesn't supply Ukraine, will they have enough to fight back? And how many countries are going to get dragged into the war because of the potential help? Those are the questions that are lurking in my mind. In Donbass. Tonight, the first images of Russia's doomed flagship, the Moskva, which Ukraine said it struck with two missiles. The dramatic new video circulating online shows it on fire and listing in the Black Sea. It later sank. And across this country, heartache. Hello, Katya. I'm James. Katya is 14 years old. Shrapnel tore into her hip and wrist when a shell landed in her garden near Zaporizhia. Her grandmother, Alexandra, rushed her to the hospital. Many of my friend's houses were destroyed, damaged, she says. We live in a big village and there's so much destruction there. Russia says it's fake, but she says they are faking it. We are real people. Yeah, we know this. It's a propaganda game that Russia has been losing since the beginning because Especially during an age of social media, it's so easy for us to fact check and everything. Um, it's tragic to see that. I understand this is kind of just a part of the news, but we've seen so many, so many of the same other stories and that are unfortunately a lot worse than what happened to her granddaughter. And um, that doesn't make it okay. It just makes it not as newsworthy. Like Butcher, they're gathering evidence of war crimes here too. So this bullet went into a three-year-old? Yes. Interviews with like the young that. survivors, bullets and shrapnel from young bodies collected and recorded. The doctor chokes back tears. 40 years of experience, he tells me, I've never had to do this. In so many parts of the East, Ukrainians... Hey, you don't have to do anything like what's in wartime until it's wartime, man. I mean... I've never, like, I know the Iraq war happened when I was alive, but this is the first war I get to sit here, cover, watch, and pay attention to. And I already knew going in, based on what I've seen in the past, how awful and, and just disgusting war is. It's, it's terrible.
we count people as statistics in a in a battle of killing each other typically for the motive of a few not the entire country face a terrible choice to go or to stay like Natasha, who we met as she arrived in Zaporizhia with her son Ivan. Leaving was safer than staying, she says. But where will you live? Where will you stay? My mom, my... Why do you have to ask such, like... You're a reporter and you're clearly just fishing here. I, I, I don't know how much I respect that. Let me know what you think in the comments, but I don't know how much I respect this reporting. My mommy. Your mother's here. My, my mama. Hello. With her mother, she tells me, who then suddenly arrives, overcome with the need to hug her grandson. <laughs> suddenly, that wasn't planned at all. She just pulled up while you... <laughs> I have waited for this for so long, she says. And David, this offensive doesn't necessarily all happen. That's so weird. It's a very weird reporting. It's just, I waited to see him for so long. Is she talking about years? She's just talking about since the beginning of the war? At the same time, there are different pockets of fighting in different areas, and Ukraine is keen to take the fight to Russia. David. All right, James Longman, inside. Of course they're keen. We've heard this time and time again. Overall, this was a good video. The reporting at the end kind of irritating, but at the end of the day, Eastern Ukraine is an easy target for Russia, and it's going to be targeted heavily. The Russians are going to take this attack slower, and it's still a time game, man. I mean, they, they completely restarted their whole attack, essentially, after almost two months of attacking, and now they're going to go for a slower approach. So I'm very curious to see if it's going to be a more well thought out approach, if they're going to have the supplies for it, if it's going to be another disaster. And again, what all is really going to happen?